Hey guys, appreciate you checking out my YouTube channel. This is Coach Simpson uh, with fbcoachsimpson.com and I'm trying to go through different themes each week. This week is buck sweep week and so these are adjustments that you can make to your buck sweep or problems you may have to have answers for. Uh, I'm going to try to do a couple different ones. Uh, this week I've already talked about handling a nine technique. I've talked about handling a shaded nose. Now I'm going to talk about how to handle teams that want to blitz. The next couple ones I'll talk about handling a backside four or three. Then I'm going to talk about trying to get our numbers right. I'm going to do all board work in these sessions, but if you would like to get game clips, I've got plenty available, either through PowerPoints, through courses, you can get in my quick cut film group. All of that's available on fbcoachsimpson.com, or you can even get a full course that I've put out on this on coachtube.com. You can also go through in this YouTube channel, there's lots of other videos that deal with materials like this. So however you want to gain your information, uh, you're obviously here to study football, should be plenty of it available for you. So today we're going to talk about handling the blitz running buck sweep. So there are three different solutions we try to use when we're seeing teams that are heavy blitzes. First of all, let me tell you, we want teams to blitz. If you're a wing T team, the first solution you work on is teams that want to put 100 guys in the line of scrimmage or want to blitz. Because if you can't answer that, that's what they're going to do all the time. So we've gotten to the point where we're pretty good at teams blitzes. We really make them pay. And so teams have stopped blitzing us for the most part because they know that usually doesn't work for them because we've gotten to the point where our kids have repped these plays over and over and over. And the only way you get to that is being simple on how many plays you run and being really good at those. Now, all of that being said, here's the ways we're going to handle heavy blitzing teams. And so the way you'll recognize this off the bat is you'll scout them. So you'll watch their film, you recognize that's kind of what they've gone to. A lot of times it may be a down and distance, something that predicates a down and distance or field zone, you get in the red zone, they always do this. Or third and short, they always do whatever. You can usually scout a defense and get kind of an idea, but you can really get an idea if you watch how they play. Defenses are usually built on one or two principles. Either they're very sound with technique or they're very much movable defenses that are trying to create uh, penetration and that. And both those are good defenses. This, the defense I'm talking about is usually the one that's going to move a lot. Okay, And so that when you know you see that on film, you know that more than likely one of their answers or maybe their main answer to you is going to be blitzing. So our first answer is what we call a stay call. So let's say we get a walk up where it's obvious this guy's blitzing. A lot of times we don't really worry about blitzers off the edges because they're going to get kicked and we're going to cut underneath and we kind of hope they do that. Okay. Mainly when I'm talking about blitzers, I'm talking about they're trying to send two guys through the A gap. Okay. Or maybe a guy A gap, A gap, B gap, B gap, where they're occupying where if we pull two guards, that could be a problem. So the first thing we do is we call a stay call which will tell our pulling guard on the strong side to what it sounds like. You are going to stay home. The premise behind that is one of these two guys is the blitzer. And that's the only way it evens can work is one of the two inside linebackers has, instead of playing that gap, he's now blitzing that gap. So let's say we walk this player up here. This end's going to go here. We call stay. That lets our guy know you're taking a gap. We're blocking down, we're blocking down, which he would actually release here. We're blocking down, we're backside. And now instead of wrapping, our other guard knows we're going to pull kick whatever shows up. You don't get a wrapping guard. It turns into essentially long trap or down, a long version of down for the wing T. The reason we feel okay with that is the guy we were wrapping for is right there. If he blitzed, he took himself out of the play. So all we're going to do is call a stay call and basically block it. I've heard it called a rail call before. Lots of calls you can make. It really doesn't matter what the terminology is as long as your kids know what they're doing. Okay, And that will handle the team that you know, hey, this guy walked up, it was blatantly obvious what they're doing, or maybe we're at the three-yard line and that linebacker's playing at two yards, so where he can never make the fill play, so we're just going to down block it all, kick it, and hit underneath it. That's a stay call. Second thing you can do is you can work with your splits. Okay. For us, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll condense splits because now there's not as much room to blitz. And if you do blitz, we're usually with the condensed splits, we're usually going to be out the gate before you can make a play. 
you know, we want to coach up our tailback that he is here and he's downhill right now. There is no playing around. So if you want to blitz A gap, B gap, somewhere over here, we ought to be able to hit it quick enough where we're out, we're out the door. Okay, and so we'll bring our splits in a little bit tighter. Okay, I'm a big believer that if you're going to cheat splits, you never want to cheat depth. That's easy to see. Your coach on the sideline sees it. The fans in the stands see it. You're cheating depth. They know you're pulling. But if you start cheating in and out, that's a little harder to see. Now that's reliant on a 16, 17-year-old kid to recognize that. Third thing we'll do is we'll RPO. Okay, so we're a big RPO team. So if you're going to blitz one of these two guys, we're probably going to call something where we're reading that guy. So let's say this guy becomes your heavy blitzer. Well, we've got RPOs we're going to go to uh, that read him. So if he decides to blitz, he comes unblocked. That's great. He tackled the running back. We pulled it or we pulled it to throw it, whatever it's going to be. So those are our three answers if teams want to blitz us. And I'll tell you, if you're going to run the shotgun wing tee or any version of wing tee, or really any version of offense, you better have an answer for teams that are going to blitz. Because in my mind, that's the first thing as a defensive coordinator, I'm trying to see how you handle. If you don't handle the blitz well, you're about to get it all night. So you better make sure you've built in answers to your team to handle that stuff. Appreciate your time, guys. I've got a ton more on my website. So if you want to go get in-depth with game film and all that stuff, it's there. You can also go to CoachTube and get more of that. Or you can just search this YouTube channel. There's plenty of material there as well. We've got two more coming up this week. We're going to talk about handling a backside four or three, usually that under front or three, four team. How are you going to handle that backside guy? And then also how to get our numbers right in order to run buck sweep. As you can see, I'm a big fan of this play. I want to run it no matter what. So I've got to have answers to make sure that I can do that. Appreciate your time.